So hi guys, I'll be telling you about the new features in Fedina 3.4.1 today. We've come up with five new features and eight enhancements. So let's see that. The first feature that we have is assigning role numbers to the students. So role numbers are unique identification numbers assigned to the students at the time of admission or after the admission. And role numbers are unique only to students within a batch. This means no two students of a batch can be assigned the same role number. So to assign role numbers, we have to go to administration and settings. And here we have general settings. And here we have this option to enable role number for students. We can check it and update it. So this option will be appearing in Fedina 3.4.1. And when you do that, you will get a link here. When you go back to configuration, you will get this link of manage student role numbers. So here we can assign role numbers to the students. Now there are two ways in which you can assign the role numbers. The first way is you can use custom import and admit all the students. So this is the general way. This is the normal way that we use. We can admit all the students and then come here and assign role numbers. So this is the first way. Use custom import. Admit the students using the template that you have and come to this option of configuration and go to manage student role number and we can assign role numbers. This is one way. Another way is we can admit each student and on admission I'll be asked to fill a field called role number. So we can assign role number to each student while admitting. So these two options are there. Let me show you the first way. Now let's assume that using custom import, I have admitted all the students in the normal way that we have in Fedina. Now I will go to manage student role numbers. And here I'll be selecting the batch to which I want to assign role numbers. Now when you open manage student role numbers for the first time in Fedina 3.4.1, you will be asked to select the sorting method for the role numbers. So as you might be aware, role numbers can be assigned in any sorted way of admission number, the first name of the student or the last name of the student. So this is the first screen that you will get. This means that you can assign role numbers to the students of a batch sorted by their first name or sorted by their last name or sorted by the admission number. So the way you want to assign the role numbers, you can select one of them. Now when I got this screen, I have selected first name to be the sorted method. So that is why when you see here, it shows me stu sort students based on first name, although it can be edited at a later point. So now here, I'll be selecting a batch in which I just used custom import. So let's say that batch is grade 4 that I have here. And I'll be clicking on view batches. So when I view the batch, I can see all the batches here and the roll number status to be not set for the first time. So I can set roll numbers. So when I click on set roll numbers, you will see that all the students of this batch that I used or that I've already admitted will appear like this along with their role numbers. You can see they are sorted by the first letter of the first name. So we have the role numbers here. You can edit any role number for any student. Also you have an option to set prefix of the batch or the course. So let me show you what that means. Currently the roll number that this student will be having will be 001. For the second student, 002 and so on. But I can prefix the roll number to identify the course and the batch of the student as well. For example, I can go to manage student roll number here. I can select the grade again. So let's say this is the class which is grade 4. 
I can set row number prefix here for this course. So I'll click on set row number prefix and give the row number prefix. So let's say it is G4 denoting the students belong to grade 4. So like this. And now when I click on view batches and when I set the row number for any batch you will see it automatically comes prefixed by the course row number prefix. Though I also have an option to edit this for this particular batch. So for this particular batch, let's say this batch is section A. So I can mention a row number like this, a row number prefix like this. So all the students will now be having G4A001, G4A002 and so on. And these roll numbers, if I apply the roll numbers, they will be up, they will be shown everywhere in Fidina, starting from the reports to the fee receipts that you generate. So let me show you a few places where I can see them. So when I see the batch details, so that was the batch which is grade 4. So this batch here, you will see that the roll numbers appear like this. Not only here, if I go to the finance section and I generate the receipt after collecting the fees, I will be able to see the roll numbers in the receipt as well. So the roll numbers will be available to view in all the reports and everywhere else along with the admission number that we have in Fidina. The login functionality does not change here. So the students have to log in using their admission number only right now. So this is about assigning student role numbers. Then let's see another feature that we have, which is again under general settings. So here we have the date format, date and the time format. So we can select here date format to be date, month, year month, date, year or year, month and date. So as for the way you want to see in Fidina, you can select it and the changes will be reflected in all the reports and everywhere else in Fidina. This is a date separator, so it's a forward slash or a hyphen. So here I've changed the date format to be date, month and year and the separator to be hyphen. So let me show you again where it will get reflected. So let me show you one place under reports that we have. We have the batch details. So you can see the start date and the end date. So it shows date, month, year separated by a hyphen. So not only here, again in the feed receipts, in the PDFs that you generate using Fidina and everywhere else, the date format will be shown as DDMMYYYY. You can change it again by going to settings here. So as per the way you want to see in Fidina, you can select it. The next enhancement that we have is the start day of the week. So the, the way you want to see in the calendar. So for example, I have this calendar module in Fidina which is available to all the students, to the parents and the employees. And when I click on calendar, I'll be able to see the calendar starting from Tuesday. So this is because I've set Tuesday to be the start day of the week in general settings. If you want it to be Monday or Saturday or any other weekday, you can select that by going to settings and here general settings and you can change that to that particular day and update it and when you see the changes here in the calendar, it will be starting from the weekday that you selected. So this is the first place where the change is reflected when you change the weekday. Another place is timetable. So when you view a timetable for a particular batch, so let me select it for this batch, you can see that it is going to start from the weekday that you have, that you have selected. So this is about changing the weekdays. 
So the next feature that we have come up with is the institute settings that again we have when we go to general settings. So here we'll be going to general settings and here we have the institution type. Now let me tell you what institution types that we have here mean. So the K-12 refers to educational institutions that cover kindergarten all the way to class or grade 12. So it means primary and the secondary education. And the second one which is higher education, it refers to education institutions such as universities and colleges that offer education beyond secondary education. For example, a two or a three year degree course of chosen subject. Now if I select K-12 option, wherever you see the term course, it will be replaced by class in Fidina's interface. It's basically to indicate a year of education. And the year of education can be grade 7 or class 7, a standard or form, any nomenclature that, that your country's educational system follows. So I've changed it to K-12 and when I change it, you will see that when I go to any term where I saw course, it is replaced by class. So I have manage class batch instead of course batch. So this is to avoid the confusion that we have. So this is for K-12. The other one, so if I select higher education, there are no changes in Fidina, meaning that the course is termed as a course itself. And higher, selecting higher education or not selecting anything here means the same thing. Because course remains unchanged. So the only change is the way you see the courses in case you select K-12. So as I said, if the institution type is not specified, by default the term course will be used throughout FIDINA. So this was another feature that we have. Let's see another very good feature that we have which is batch summary. So here for a particular batch, so let me select a course here, let's say grade 4 and for a batch which is 8 2014 that I have, I'll be able to see the list of all the students in this batch along with the admission number and the roll numbers. I'll be able to see the student attendance details for a day. So here, for this day that I have, I can see that there are 13 students present out of 15. So there are two absentees and the details come up here. And this is for this date that I've selected. I can scroll it to see it for another day. So yesterday, there were three absentees. So 12 out of 15. It also shows the attendance percentage here. And then we can also see the subject and the employee allocation details for the timetable. So here. So for this timetable duration that I've created, the subjects, the total number of classes or the hours, the employees and how are they taking it. So Veena is taking two, sub, two periods for mathematics and Hitesh is taking four periods of mathematics in this timetable duration. Elective group is also there, but it's not yet allocated, so it does not show any employees or the total number of periods. Then we have the timetable details. So for a particular date, I can see the timetable along with the classroom and the building details. So like here. So for today, there's a class that is going to happen from 12.50 to o'clock for the mathematics subject. And this is the employee who's going to take it. And this is the classroom and this is the building where this class will take place. Then we can see the examination details like this. So what, how, how many ongoing exams are there? How many finished exams are there? And for how many exams the result is published? 
this is as per the dates that you specified while creating the exams so this is the examination status details so this view is not only available to the admin but also to the tutor so for a batch we can assign a tutor the tutor had a privilege to take attendance earlier but now the tutor can also view batch summary details and can also view the profiles of the student so if i log in as this tutor who is a teacher who is an employee that i have given the privilege of a tutor for this batch i will be able to see batch summary details and i can also view the profile details by clicking on the name of the student here so this is for the batch for which i am assigned as a tutor let me also tell you from where we can assign tutor we can go to settings we have manage class batch manage class and here we will be selecting the class for which we want to assign the batch for which we want to assign and here under more under manage we have assign tutor so we'll be selecting the employee like this so this is assigning the tutor so this employee now can mark attendance and also view the batch summary of this batch for which he is the tutor so this is another enhancement that we've come up with which is related to batch summary and then let's see activating and deactivating batches as another feature so to see that we'll be going to administration we have settings and we have manage course batch and we have manage batch so here for a particular class so let's say i have class 2 i'll be able to see the active batches and the inactive batches so the view has changed here so the active batches are the ones that are running for which i can create examination i can create timetable i can assign subjects assign teachers and so on the active batch for which i have already assigned timetable examination teachers we cannot deactivate them they will automatically get deactivated when we transfer the students from this batch to another batch if you want to manually deactivate a batch it can only be done if a batch is new meaning that you have not entered any students you have not created any subjects timetables and so on so you can deactivate this batch when you deactivate the batch it will show in the list of inactive batches which can be activated at any point so any inactive batch which you manually inactivated or which was done by a batch transfer can be activated at any point active batches let me repeat that again active batches are the batches which for which we can create timetable for which we can create examinations so in short the running batches of the institute are the active batches inactive batches are the ones which were used but now no longer are running so these are the five important features that fedina 3.4.1 has come up with now let's see some enhancements so the first enhancement that we have is when we go to finance and here we can go to fees and create fees and here we have create discount and here we can create discount for any batch for a category of student or for a single student so this is what used to be there earlier as well now if i select something like this so i want to create a discount for the student for which student category do i want that so i'll be selecting that from here now you can see that i get this option to create discount for the batches of this category so if i have more than one batch i can select that from here or for the particular of this category meaning that i want to create discount for a student for tuition fee particular so let me repeat that again so let's say there is this student and for this student i want to give discount of let's say a fixed amount which is 40 on his tuition fee 
So that is a new option that we've come up with. We can give discounts based on particulars of a category that you've already created. So here I've selected particulars of this category. The particulars that I've created for this three category come up. I can check the one for which I want to create discount. I can check the student since I've selected student to be the discount type. I can give the name of this discount. So I'm giving some appropriate name here and I can create it. So once I've done that, discount creation is a delayed job, meaning that it'll take around 30 seconds to one minute for it to be reflected in the final receipt of that student. Now there is one more step that has to be done when we create discount using particular wise way. So for that, we have to go to schedule fee collection and here we have manage fee collection. So this is another enhancement that I'm telling you about, which is related to that discount or the particulars that we've created. So we can see for a particular batch, the fee collection and the particulars. So here you have an option to view the particulars batch wise. So for the full batch, the particulars for this fee collection that I've created. If I have created any student wise particular, they will appear here. If I have created any student category wise particular, they will appear here. So let me tell you when will data come here. So when I am creating the fees here, when I create particular, you will see that when I am selecting a fee category, let's say for this. I can create this fee category or this fee particular for all the students. So this is that batch wise. For some particular students, so this is that student wise. Or for student category. So this is that student category wise. So based on how you have created particulars here, it will show up when you see in the manage fee collection. So like this. Currently, when I created the tuition fee and the registration fee particular for this fee category and for this fee collection, I created it for the full batch. So I selected all there. Otherwise, I would have gotten these values as well. Then I have discount. So I can also see the discount details that I've already created for the fee category. So let me show you. Again, we have batch wise. So if I would have selected batch discount when I created it, it would have come here. Student wise. So if I would have selected student and for the batch. So let me tell you here again. So when I created the discount, when I'm selecting here batch, so that is the first option, batch wise. When I'm selecting here student and I'm selecting this, when I'm selecting here student, like this and I'm selecting the fee category here and the student category like this. So batches of this category. So if I let it be like this, it will be student wise. So it's not particular wise. If I select particulars, it will be particular wise. And if I select student category, it will be student category wise. So all the four options that you see here, they depend on how you created the discount. So for this batch, for this fee collection, when I select discount, I can see batch wise, student wise, student category wise. And this is where I created that discount, which is this one. So I can assign the discount. And I can apply it to the student. Now, if I collect the fees from the student. So let me show you for a student for which I have applied the discount here. So now if I collect the fees, it will show up here. So like this, let me see if I have for another student for which I just assigned. So I'll be able to select the fee collection. So it is similar to what we used to do. 
the difference is that it shows that the discount is on tuition fee so on the particular that you created and here let me show you also how we can take this fee collection from the student not only this kind of fees which is which is already set which is a tuition fee and registration fee we also have an option to add a particular here for example i can add particular something like uniform fees which is particular to the student and the student is paying for it so the particular will appear here i can keep on adding such instant particulars which will be appearing with the normal fee that you've already scheduled not only this you also have an option to add discount here so the instant discount that you have so any appropriate name can be given and it will appear here and accordingly the calculation will change and the amount here will change rest of the things remain same we have the payment mode we can select the payment note here something like this we can select the payment date which can be the past date present date or the future date and when i print a receipt i i can also see the cashier details here so this is the partial payment receipt so i can pay the fees like this and when i print the receipt i'll be able to see the cash cashier details here so the cashier details this is new enhancement it will show you the name of the user who is collecting this fees so these are the enhancements that we've come up in the finance module basically in the fees now let's see the changes in time table so under academics we have time table and here earlier we used to set the weekdays first and then create the class timings and then assign them to the batches now we can manage the class timing set first so it means i'll give an example here let's say for this grade 4 from monday to friday the class timings that you follow is 9 to 5 and on saturday the class timing is different so let's say they only work they only come in the afternoons so we can say 2 to 5 so now it is possible to give such class timing sets to the batches so this is the enhancement that we have with fedina 3.4.1 so the first step is to create class timing set with one which is monday to friday which is 9 to 5 another which is only saturday which is 2 to 5 so depending on how different the class timing is each day we have to create so many class timing sets So to create a class timing set we will click on new this is the general way in which we create it it will ask the name of the class timing so i can give something like this monday to friday for grade 4 so this is the first class timing set that i'll create another one that i'll create is let's say saturday grade 4 because it is different on a saturday So like this I can create many class timing sets you will see that I've already created here and to add timings in these class timing sets we will click on view class timing set here so in the in front of the class timing set that you just created click on view class timing set and when you open it for the first time it will be empty so you have to click on add class timing set to mention the period the start time and the end time so i've already added four periods here if you see in the background let me add one more so like this so let's say it is from 2 o'clock and goes till 3 o'clock here so like this so like this i can keep on adding class timings till the end of the day for monday to friday as per my requirement let me add one more
So here for Monday to Friday for grade 4, I have assigned class timing set period 1 to period 6 starting at 9 and ending at 4.30. Now similarly, I have to do it for the other one which is Saturday. So Saturday only afternoons are working, let's assume. So here I have already entered 12 to 1, 12 to 5. So four periods are there. It is different from Monday to Friday. So now I'll be able to assign these class timing sets that I just created to each day of the batch. So to do that, I'll be going to set weekdays and class timing set. So this is the second link that I've come in now. And I'll be selecting the batch for which I want to assign. So let's say this is the batch. And you will see that since we selected the weekday to be Saturday in the general settings, it shows up as Saturday as the first weekday here. So this is another reflection of that change. So here from Monday to Friday, by default, you will see that default class timing set is assigned to any batch that you select here. So that is by default. Now, if you do not want to every time change it, like here, from Monday to Friday, I need to make this one currently because six periods are there from 9 to 4.30. So that is our assumption here. So let's say I have to change it for each day here like this. So I am assigning like this. So Monday to Friday, this is what will be followed. And for Saturday, I want to follow which was the last one, which is Saturday grade 4. Sunday is not working, so I'm not checking this. And we can also select the days or the date from which this timetable will be applicable, after which this timetable will be applicable. So what it means is, till today, the timetable was following the default class timing set and starting this date, which can be a future date as well, not only the current date, it will follow this class timing set. So we can select applicable from, meaning that whenever you create a timetable which is after this date, so when you go to create timetable and create timetable after this date, this is the class timing set that will be followed for this batch. So here I can save this. So if you note here, I'll have to do this for each and every batch that I have. So I'll be selecting like this. I'll be changing for each day. You can also avoid that. You can avoid that by changing the default class timing set itself instead of creating your new class timing sets. So when you go to manage class timing set, you can see default automatically comes here and you can view it and you can edit these timings. By default, there will be nothing in default class timing set. I've already added data, so it is coming. So you can add your class timings and you can edit the ones that are already there. And then you need not assign them to each batch, like I've done for each day. You can only create for the ones which are different. So this is about how, we, how the first two links have changed and how the interface has become better with the functionality of you able to assign different class timing set to each day. So apart from you know, the few cosmetic changes to the interface which we have done, the functionality to manage class timing sets has been removed. So if you remember, if you've used Fedina timetable before, you have to select the batch and then assign the available batches and, you know, assign it to the available batches or the assigned batches for each batch. So that functionality has been removed and instead we've come up with this interface where you have to select the batch and assign the class timing here. So this is about managing class timings. We can also print the timetable as a CSV now. So when I go to view timetable and for the timetable duration that I have, 
when I see the timetable here for a particular batch, you will see that I get an option not only for PDF, which I already had earlier, for CSV as well. So this is another enhancement that we have. So these are the changes that we have in timetable. One more small cosmetic interface change that we have is when you go to edit timetable. You will see that the way the interface is appearing is different now. So you choose the timetable duration and you can edit the timetable entries from here instead of what you used to get on top right corner here. And you can edit the range as well. So the range of this timetable duration which is generally the academic of the batch that you have. So here, now it is same. So only this change is there. Also, when you are assigning the timetable. So let me show you for this patch. Like this. So when I am assigning the timetable, I will be able to select the batch. So let's say this is the batch. I will be selecting the subject. Let me select a batch which has associated teacher. So like this. So this batch shows the weekdays for which it is working. So it means I might not have assigned Saturday. That is why Saturday is not coming as the first weekday. So when I selected the class timing set, I have not assigned Saturday here. And so Saturday is not coming as the first weekday for this batch. If you assign Saturday for any batch, it will be the first weekday since that is the setting that we have done in the general settings. So you will see that the interface is changed here. So I will be clicking where all I want mathematics to happen. So I have selected the subject and let's say these are the four places. So I am just clicking on these boxes, on these cells that you see. And now I will be assigning Veena. So I am checking on this box again and click on assign. You can also drag and drop. But if you feel that is uncomfortable, you can as well check this and click on assign. So it gets assigned like this. So I'll do this for another subject that I have. So again, I'll be selecting the cells where I want that subject to happen. Selecting the name of the employee and click on assign like this. So this is how the creation of timetable or the allocation of classes to the teachers have changed. So these are the changes that we have come up in timetable. Another cosmetic change that we have is under custom reports. So this is the last enhancement that I am telling you about, custom reports. So for the student, we can generate the immediate contact details report as well. So here, when you used to create a report for the student, you used to get all these details as the columns. You will see that you can also select immediate contact details as well if you want it to appear in the report that you are generating. So we've come up with all these options of selecting them as columns for the student. So the immediate contact is the guardian who you have selected as an immediate contact when you admitted the student. So this is the chain that we have in the student category when you create a student report. Another chain that we have is in the new employee report. That is about the employee category. So here again as a column, we've come up with employee category option as well. So when generating a custom employee report, you can now include the employee category field to be displayed in the report from here. So these are the five features and the eight enhancements that I've told you about.